Welcome to Hello English Teacher. Today let us look at the line by line explanation of the second part of the chapter Boli from class 10. If you are watching my video for the first time, please subscribe. You can listen to the explanations of chapters from classes 10, 11 and 12 English. And do not forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a video. Let us move on to the video now. So, we saw how the teacher encouraged Boli when she was able to tell her name in full. She spoke to her in a very kind manner. So, let us continue. Boli looked up as if to ask, really? Yes, yes, it will be very easy. You just come to school every day. Will you come? And the teacher also told her that she has to get rid of her fear and then she will be able to talk. And then now she is telling her, advising her to come to school every day so that she will be able to speak properly. Boli nodded. No, say it aloud. Yes. So, the teacher also asked her to tell yes loudly so that she can start her speaking practice as well. So, she stammered but at the same time she was able to say the word yes. And Boli herself was astonished that she had been able to say it. So, she felt happy when she was able to say the word because the teacher was so cooperative and supporting her, she was able to say it without any fear. Didn't I tell you? Now take this book. The book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color. So the teacher gave her a book and it had a lot of pictures, all colorful pictures of animals. And there was a picture of a cow also which uh, Boli thought was looking just like the cow she had at home that is Lakshmi. And with every picture was a word in big black letters. So, the name of the picture was also written in big letters. In one month, you will be able to read this book. Then I will give you a bigger book, then a still bigger one. So, the teacher was encouraging her all the while. So, she told her that she would give her another book once she finished learning this book. And after that, she will get even a bigger book so that she will be able to read whatever comes across her way. So, in time you will be le more learned than anyone else in this village. So, the teacher also promised her that she would be one of the best students herself in this village and that she would be the, she would be able to read more than anyone else from this village. Then no one will ever be able to laugh at you. So, the teacher also said that nobody will make fun of her because once she is able to read in a better manner, nobody will be able to laugh at her. People will listen to you with respect and will be able to speak without the slightest stammer. Understand? So, the teacher is always encouraging her by telling her that once her uh, reading and writing skills go up, once she keeps practicing, she will be able to speak and listen just like the other people and then the other people will start respecting her and then her stammering would completely disappear. Now go home and come back early morning tomorrow. So the teacher is asking Boli to go back home and come to school the next day. Boli felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the schoolhouse had bloomed into big red flowers. So she was feeling so happy and she was feeling that there was a change in the entire atmosphere. She heard this, she thought that she heard the sound of the temple bells and she could also see the flowers, beautiful big red flowers had bloomed in front of her house. So, this was all because of the happiness that had come into her because of the support given by the teacher. Her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life. So, her heart was throbbing that means it was beating fast because she had a new hope. What is a new hope? That she would be able to read and write like the others and that she would be able to speak without stammering. And so, she was hoping to get a new life. Thus, years passed. That means, years passed by. So, she used to go to school daily. She learnt a lot and the years passed. The village became a small town. So, there was a lot of development happening around. So, now the village had become a small town. The little primary school became a high school. So, the number of students also increased and naturally, naturally it had become a high school now. There were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton, cotton spinning mill. Okay. 
So now there was a cinema theatre also and a cotton mill was also uh, there in the village. The mail train began to stop at their railway station. So the station also everything was improved. One night after dinner, Ramlal said to his wife, then shall I accept Bishambar's proposal? So you see there was a lot of change in the village. Everything was expanding. The school expanded, there was a cotton mill, there was a cinema theatre, the train began to stop at the railway station. So there was a lot of development. So what happened? One day night, her father, that is Ramlal, spoke to his wife, that is Boli's mother. So what did he say? Shall I accept Bishamba's proposal? What is a proposal? A request for marriage. So the husband is asking the wife a permission. Yes, certainly, his wife said. Boli will be lucky to get such a well-to-do bridegroom. So what was the proposal about? Bishambar had asked the permission to marry Boli. And so the father is asking the mother whether he should agree to this proposal. And then what did the mother say? Yes, Boli should be really lucky to get a well-to-do bridegroom. That means well-to-do means he was considered to be a rich man. Okay, so the mother is telling she should be lucky to get this rich, uh, this proposal from a rich man. A big shop, a house of his own and I hear several thousands in the bank. So what all he had? He had a big house, he had a shop of his own and he also had a lot of money in the bank. So they thought that he was the best person to marry Boli. Moreover, he is not asking for any dowry. So they were happy that he is not asking for dowry. Dowry is the big amount of sum to be paid by the girl during the wedding and this man Bishambar had not asked any money so they were happy that's right but he is not so young you know almost the same age as I am and he also limbs so the father was telling that he is a very old fellow he is as old as the father itself so he is not a young man and he also limbs that means one of his legs is not proper so this Bishambar is an old man almost equal to the age of Boli's father and he has a limp on his leg that means he cannot walk properly and this man is asking permission to marry and he wants to marry Boli. Moreover the children from his first wife were quite grown up and the father is telling one more thing what is that Bishambar is already married and his children from the first wife are grown up children so they will not create any problem. And so what is the wife replying to this? So what does it matter? 45 or 50 it is no great age for a man. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pork marks or at least her lack of sense. If we do not accept this proposal, she may remain unmarried all her life. So the mother is telling it does not matter whether he is old or whether he has two children. One good thing is that he is from another village and he does not know about the marks on her face that she had got because of the smallpox. And he also does not know that she is a simpleton. That means she does not have any sense. So if we don't accept this proposal, we may not be able to get her married off again. So this is what the mother replied. Yes, but I wonder what Bali will say. What will that witless one say? So the father was worried what she will say whether she would accept such a proposal because he's an old man that is he is almost similar to her father's age and he does not have one leg he limbs. So he was worried whether she would agree. So immediately what does the mother reply? What will that witless one say? Witless one who does not have proper intelligence or sense. So she is saying that she is like a dumb cow that means she is someone who cannot speak properly. So she will not object, she has to agree to it. So maybe you are right, muttered Ramlal. So Ramlal also had to accept whatever the mother said because they felt that they would not get anyone else to marry her because she has so many drawbacks and this man was willing to marry her. In the co other corner of the courtyard, Boli lay awake on her cot listening to her parents whispered conversation. So Boli was there, she was lying down on a cot and she was listening to what the parents were telling. She was hearing how they were arguing and how they were trying to convince each other about the proposal. Bishambarnath was a well-to-do grocer. 
he came to a big party of friends he came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the wedding so bishambar nath is the bridegroom and he is a well to do grocer what do you mean by a grocer a grocer is a person who sells food and other household articles so we know that he has a shop so he is a rich person so for the wedding he came with a lot of people he brought lot of friends and relations with him for the wedding for his wedding a brass band playing a popular tune from an indian film headed the procession so when he came with the procession for his wedding a band a popular hindi song or an indian film song was playing and he came with a lot of pomp and show so with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse so the bridegroom was that is bishambar nath was seated on a horse so he came with all these show big pomp and show he came to the wedding ramlal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor so ramlal the girl's father was so happy to see that the rich bridegroom was arriving with such a show pomp and show means all show of all the wealth and all those other things so he had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding so he never expected that this girl who was called boli who was a simpleton who was made fun of by everybody would get such a rich husband boli's elder sisters who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck so she had three sisters so they were all feeling envious envious means jealous of her because she was getting to marry a rich man so when the auspicious moment came the priest said bring the bride so this auspicious moment here is the time when the man would tie with the knot so when that moment came the priest who was present there told to bring the bride boli clad in a red silken bridal dress was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire so a fire would be burnt the bride and the groom would be seated near that and it is from there where all the uh, important uh, proce- proceedings of the wedding takes place so the bride was brought so boli was the bride and she was wearing a beautiful red dress silk dress and then she was bought and made to sit next to bishambar nath garland the bride one of his friends prompted bishambar nath so somebody prompted that means told bishambar nath to put the garland around the bride's neck the bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds a woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's waist so bishambar nath was ready getting ready to put the garland around her neck so he took a garland of marigolds it was made of marigolds and then some woman who was sitting next to boli just removed the veil that covered her face so it just fell back and then it revealed her face so it was covered till now so when the veil fell down what happened everybody could see the bride's face bishambar took a quick glance so he was also able to see the bride's face so till now her face was covered but when the lady pulled down the veil he was able to see boli's face the garland remained poised in his hands so he just stopped he did not wear it around her neck the bride slowly put down the veil over her face so what did she do she just covered her face have you seen her said bishambar to the friend next to him she has spoke marks on her face so immediately bishambar spoke to his friend what did he say he told loudly see have you look at have you seen her face she has a lot of poke marks on her face so what you are not young either so the man said okay she has poke marks you are also not a young man you are also an old man maybe but if i have to marry her her father must give me 5000 rupees but the man this greedy man bishambar nath immediately what did he reply he said if i should marry this girl then that girl's father should give me 5000 rupees otherwise i will not marry her so why did he keep this condition because he saw her face only now and he felt that because she had poke marks all over her face he must be given the money so that he will marry her so that's why he said the girl's father should give me 5000 rupees then only i will marry her okay so ramlal went and placed his turban his honor at bishambar's feet so why did he do this because he was feeling embarrassed his daughter's wedding would be stopped because the groom wants money if the money was not given he would not be ready to marry the girl so he wanted 
Bishambar Nath to save the occasion. So that is why he went pleading to him by keeping his turban on his feet. Do not humiliate me so. Take 2000 rupees. And what did he say? He started pleading. He said, do not humiliate me. That means don't treat me like this. You are treating me in a very bad manner. You are irritating me. You are making fun of me. And it is causing a lot of embarrassment. Please don't do this. You take 2000 rupees. No, 5000 or we go back. But this Bishambar Nath, he was so stern. What did he say? No, I don't want 2000. If you are giving, you give me 5000. Then only I will marry. Otherwise, we will go back. Keep your daughter. He said, I will not marry your daughter unless you give me 5000 rupees. Be a little considerate, please. If you go back, I can never show my face in the village. So the father was still pleading. He was telling, please be considerate considerate please think of my family if you don't marry my daughter then i will have no respect in this village nobody will value me so please have some mercy then out with 5000 and immediately bishamba said then if you want this please give me 5000 he didn't even say please he was so rude and he just demanded 5000 rupees Tears streaming down his face, Ramlal went in, opened the safe and counted out the notes. So the father was feeling so bad because he was being asked to pay 5000 rupees to get his daughter married. So he went in and took the money. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet. So he bought 5000 and kept it on Bishambar Nath's feet. On Bishambar's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. Triumphant smile means a victorious smile. He felt that he had won and he was feeling so happy because he also got the 5000 rupees. He had gambled and won. He had gambled means he had argued here and won that money. Give me the garland, he announced. Now after getting the money, he was ready to marry the girl. Again, the wheel was slipped back from the bride's face, but this time her eyes were not downcast. So once again, the wheel was removed from her face, but this time Boli was looking straight. She was not looking down. So she had become a little bit bold. She was looking up, looking straight at her prospective husband. What is prospective husband? The one who was going to marry her. And in her eyes, there was neither anger nor hate, only cold contempt. So she was not hating him. She was not angry. But then she only had this cold contempt showing in her eyes. So what is the feeling of cold contempt? Feeling something worthless. So she looked at him as if she was, uh, he was not at all of any use and she felt that he was worthless at that moment. So Bishamba raised the garland to place it around the bride's neck but before he could do so, Boli's hand struck out like a lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. So the man was about to garland her but what did she do? She did not like that at all so she just pushed his hand with great speed. And what happened to the garland? It just flew into the fire. She got up and threw away the wheel. Pitaji, said Boli in a clear loud voice. And her father, mother, sisters, brothers, relations and neighbors were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest stammer. So what happened? She just got up, she threw away the wheel and she just called out her father calling Pitaji. And the sound was very clear and loud and all of them who were gathered there were all surprised because she was able to speak without a single stammer. Pitaji, take back your money. I am not going to marry this man. So what did she say? Without any stammering, once again she spoke. She said, Father, please take back this money. I don't want to marry this man. Ramlal was thunderstruck. The guests began to whisper, so shameless, so ugly and so shameless. So Ramlal, who is Ramlal? The father. So he was also shocked. To hear the girl speak like this and all the guests who had appeared there who had come there for attending the wedding what did they say they were looking at Boli and telling what a shameless girl she is so ugly but look at the way she is speaking Boli are you crazy shouted Ram, Ram Lal. so her father just shouted at her screamed at her asking her are you crazy to stop this wedding you want to disgrace your ha family so he asked her whether she wanted to lose the respect of the family by not getting married have some regard for our izzat for the sake of your izzat said poli so what did the father say keep some regard for the izzat izzat here means respect in hindi 
so the father is telling to keep the honor by agreeing to marry that man for the sake of your rizat said boli i am i am willing to this i am willing to marry this lame old man but i will not have such a mean greedy and contemptible coward as my husband so what did boli reply yes for the sake of your respect only i was ready to marry this man but i don't want to marry this greedy man this contemptible coward who is a contemptible coward a contemptible man is somebody who who deserves hatred and who deserves to be disliked so she's saying i don't want this man who is so greedy who is thinking only about money i won't i won't i won't that means she's saying that i will not marry this man what a shameless girl we all thought she was a harmless dumb cow and so people started talking about her because they were all because she disagreed for the marriage they are calling her shameless and she was also ugly looking they thought that because of that she had to agree to the marriage but then she had become bold she had recognized what is right and wrong and she was able to speak up for her boli turned violently on the old woman yes auntie you are right you all thought that i was a dumb driven cow that's why you wanted to hand me over to this heartless creature so she just turned around and looked at the wo- old woman who had commented on her and she gave her a nice answer what did she say she said you thought that i was a useless girl so that is why you wanted to give me to this stupid man who was so mean and who was so greedy but now the dumb cow the stammering fool is speaking and she also said that now people whom you considered as a fool whom you considered as a stammering girl or person who stammers a lot is able to speak do you want to hear more vishambar nad the grocer started to go back with his party so the girl was so bold and she started to speak and she asked everybody if they wanted to hear her speak more so what happened after this incident vishambar nad that is the grocer the old man who wanted to marry boli started to go back that means he now understood that the wedding is not going to take place the confused bandsmen took this thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up with a closing song so what happened the band music band that was there they thought that the ceremony was over and they started a playing tune which was usually played at the end ramlal stood rooted to the ground he said bowed low with the weight of grief and shame so what happened to the girl's father ramlal he was feeling very sad he was feel feeling ashamed as well why was he feeling ashamed because the wedding did not play, take place because the groom had returned so he was just standing at that place he did not know what to do the flames of the sacred fire slowly died down so the fire that was lit where the wedding was to take place that also went down everyone was gone ramlal turned to boli and said but what about you no one will ever marry you now so now the father looked at the daughter and all the guests had also gone so he looked at the daughter and asked her he was feeling little worried he asked her what is going to happen to you because now no one will ever come to marry you what shall we do with you so the father asked what is that we should do with you because now you are going to be alone nobody is going to marry you and suleka said in a voice that was calm and steady and now now she has become a wise girl she has become a grown up girl and she spoke in a steady tone that means she have did not stammer at all and she was very calm don't you worry pitaji in your old age i will serve you and mother and i will teach in the same school where i learned so much isn't that right ma'am so she looked at her father and with great confidence she gave him an answer what did she say don't worry when you become old i will look after both you and mother and i am also going to teach in the school so is that all right so she looked at her teacher who was present there and she asked her whether what she said was right the teacher had all along stood in a corner watching the drama so her teacher was there present at the wedding and she was watching everything that was happening yes boli of course she replied and the teacher was happy and she replied yes whatever you said is right and in her smiling eyes was the light of deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of a masterpiece so the teacher was so happy her eyes shone and that happiness could be seen in her eyes because 
she was able to make the best student out of boli and this smile was similar to the artist who feels happy by completing his masterpiece when an artist finished completing his masterpiece that is his best creation he would feel so happy looking at it so the same kind of happiness was there in the teacher's face when she looked at boli because a girl who had come there who could not speak who was full of fear now has turned into a bold bright and a wise girl so she was feeling happy by looking at her masterpiece so now you understand why it is important for the family to uh, give their hand or have a helping hand in the growth of a child it is only the family who is responsible for the healthy mental and physical growth of the child so when boli was not taken care by the family she was just left alone she was a simpleton and she was put to school by chance but then the teacher was the one who gave her the complete care and taught her everything and made her into a wise girl i hope you like this video for more informative videos do subscribe to hello english teacher like share and give your valuable comments below thank you for watching